All right, folks, we are going to get started. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, waiting and being patient. We we're just letting a few folks jump on. Uh, we're going to get started and hopefully everybody can see my screen. So thank you for uh, joining today's uh, webinar. Uh, we are going to be focusing on Citrix Workspace and uh, how it unifies the enterprise. Um, so today is going to be a fun day. We uh, actually have a special guest and in, in pretty cool. I'm actually coming to you from the Citrix Raleigh office today. Uh, usually I'm sitting in my Boston office, uh, but I'm actually I have the privilege to be hanging out with Citrix today uh, in their office. My name is Pete Downing. I'm the CMTO uh, for Zantegra, so that's the Chief Marketing and Technology Officer. So a little bit of a hybrid role, but a lot of fun. Uh, I also have some nice guests there that are going to be joining me today. Uh, Jonathan Freeman, who's going to be uh, doing our demo and showing off Workspace. Uh, and then also my friend Andrew Sullivan, who's our partner account manager is also hanging with us today. So uh, very you know, honored to be you know, coming to, from Citrix today and uh, looking forward to a fun webinar. Um, so you know, just a quick agenda, you know, I'm gonna do a couple polls. I love to do polls because it gets us away the level set and understand our audience. Uh, so you know, definitely please take the polls when I put them up. Uh, I like to get 100%, you know, yeah, don't be shy. Uh, and they're pretty, you know, black and white cost, uh, cost, uh, questions, so don't, no worries. Uh, we're going to jump into a workspace overview uh, and set the stage for a demo. And, you know, John, Jonathan may jump back and forth and show things as he goes through. You know, I give him the power to do what he wants. And then, and then finally, we'll uh, wrap up with Q&A and kind of a little overview on who is Zentegra. Um, so, again, if you have any questions throughout the day, do not hesitate to ask. I'm going to be watching and I'm going to be kind of like the MC uh, for the day. Uh, so just a couple housekeeping things. Uh, yes, we are in GoToWebinar. Uh, yes, you guys are all on mute. Uh, but if you want to ask a live question at the end, don't be shy. Uh, I can unmute you, and you can ask your question live. Uh, so when we get when we do get to the Q and A uh, portion of the webinar, you can definitely uh, you know ask your question live. That said, there is also the question and answer panel dialogue in your GoToWebinar. Definitely. Definitely type in questions as we go through the day today uh, and feel free to ask as we go and I will probably answer them along the way. So if you have a question and you want it to be context based, feel free to ask and we will try to answer it as we go through uh, the webinar today. All right, so a little, little fun for those who follow uh, Zentagra and myself on LinkedIn and or Twitter, I had a little fun with some of the you know, photos and you know, we've all been in the IT industry, I'm guessing a long time. And you know, how many, how many have this user, right? You get that awesome email, says you win a million bucks, or you know, hey, your bank account's been hacked, and they click on that darn email, right? You know, you know, and again, we've all been there, done that. So that's an example where you know Citrix workspace could help. Uh, how many people have seen this? You walk around your office, you see sticky notes with your passwords written down, because you know what? You might have SAS app A and SAS app B and their login, and you know what? People just can't remember their passwords. So what do they do? They put them on sticky notes. They put them under their laptop. They put them in their top drawer. Uh, I, you know, I encourage you, walk around, go find the passwords. I bet you you will find a password, if not two, if not three. So uh, Workspace can help with that. Uh, you know what? We all get spoofed. We all get fished. We all get impersonation emails. You know, we all fall for it somehow. I mean, I, I hate to admit it, I've fallen for it before, but luckily I was using, uh, you know, software to prevent that. And, you know, Jonathan's going to show the secure browser service, which can help mitigate this issue. And I, I can tell you right now, on average, users get about six to seven emails a day that impersonate uh, a user, a bank, an invoice. Uh, you'd be surprised. So, again, that's something to think about as you go through today's webinar. And then finally, my favorite user, the user who says, oh, I was just on Facebook and I clicked on that, that video because I thought it was from Pete. You know what? And he just downloaded ransomware or he put some malware on there and now he's got a key logger and everything's getting hacked. You know, we've all been there, done that. So that's an example, some examples of where Citrix workspace could potentially help. And that's where Jonathan's gonna cover and, and go through some cool demos today. So definitely hang with us and you're gonna see a lot of nice uh, features and you're going to come away with this like, hey, I want to get workspace in my environment. All right, so I want to do a couple polls here. And uh, I really like to do polls because, again, it, it gives us a way to interact uh, with the audience a little better. 
and we can have a good understanding of kind of where we're sitting. So my first poll is very simple. Um, you know, I currently use Citrus Cloud today. So I'm gonna launch that poll, very simple, yes, no, considering it. And be honest here, you know, we don't, we don't care if you're not using it. Um, and you know, it just gives us a way to understand the audience. So I'm gonna give a couple of seconds and hopefully we can get about 80%. I like to get 80 or higher. Um, all right, we're at 73, a couple more of seconds, get a couple more votes. All right, let's close this poll, share it. So we got a lot of folks in the audience today who haven't even looked at cloud. So that's, that's good news. And I think you know, you're gonna walk out of here today and say, wow, workspace is worth taking a look. And you're gonna see the value of where you could actually potentially dabble uh, in the Citrus Cloud. And remember, Citrus Cloud is a platform, okay? Um, so you know, think about that. And as you walk through, um, uh, the webinar today you're gonna you're gonna see all the cool features that um you know the uh workspace will bring to you all right so let's uh talk about SaaS applications and again you can just guess if you don't know um you know my company's SaaS application footprint is and again this is more of, hey how many SaaS apps do you use compared to regular apps right if you're doing zen app how many zen app apps do you have versus SaaS apps so are you using 50 percent 25 percent 100 percent Again, this just gives us a good understanding of, you know, talking about single sign-on and the integration with SaaS in the Citrix workspace. So I'll give it a couple seconds. Let's see if we can get at least 70% again. And we'll give about 10 more, uh, five more seconds. And that we are gonna close this poll and we'll share it just to give you an idea. So not a lot of SaaS application usage. You know, actually surprising. Uh, so, you know, again, um, you know, you'll see the power of Citrix workspace and how it can help you with, you know, SaaS applications, uh, single sign-on, the management, uh, et cetera. So we'll talk about that today. All right, the, then my, sec my third question is simple as well. Uh, I currently use ShareFile today. So yes, simple answer. No, I use Dropbox. No, I use OneDrive. Or no, I use another vendor. Or I use on-premise storage. So just curiosity question, because again, we're going to talk about files and file management today. Uh, so I'll give it about five more seconds. And all right, we got a lot of people voting, which is awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time. So we're going to close this poll. We'll share it. So a pretty good array of folks here. Uh, so we got 25% of people using ShareFile. For, so thank you for being a customer. And we got a lot of folks using on-premise storage, so maybe we can sway to understand the power of uh, share files. So if you're interested, you know, definitely let us know, and we can uh, talk through, you know, why share file. If you're using OneDrive, hey, we can complement OneDrive as well. So um, that's good news. So the final question of the day, an easy question: uh, I still have ZenApp 6.5 uh, server in my enterprise, and again, just looking to see what's out there. No, no, no pressure here, and if you don't know, just say no. And we're gonna give about five seconds and we got a question. And yeah, someone gently reminded me they did change the name. So I, you know, sorry, my brain is still on the old Zen this and Zen that. So, you know, thank you for the gentle reminder. All right, so we're gonna close this poll. So we got about a 50-50 split. So not too bad. So a lot of people still on 6.5. You know, I'd love to hear the use case. I, I'm an ex-product manager. Uh, you know, we might have some some solutions for you to get off of 6.5. Listen, 6.5 is tried and two. I get it, but 7.15 is awesome too. So start putting that in the back of your mind, and we're going to talk to you why you should consider upgrading because you want to take advantage of Citrix workspace. All right, so let's uh, jump in, and we are going to hide this, and we are going to go back to our screen. I'm just going to make sure the screen is showing, and we are good to go. All right, so what I'm going to do is pass over to Jonathan, and we are going to jump into Citrix Workspace and how it unifies the enterprise. So that was the theme of uh, my webinar and all the content I was sharing. Uh, so I'm going to pass the, uh, uh, the presenter dash baton over to Jonathan, so bear with me while I do this. And, and I'm going to check the Q&A uh, while, while I pass it over. And Jonathan, the ball is in your court now. All right, thanks, Pete. Let me make sure I got the right screen up here. There we go. 
Yep, we can see your screen, and you are good to go, my friend. Great. Now, I just it's interesting you touched on that 6.5 question, and don't be afraid. You are not alone if you have not upgraded yet, and that uh, we're actually got some really neat tools out there to make it the process a lot easier than it, it used to be. But today, we're not going to go into how that process works, but more or less show you the features of what we have with Citrix Workspace and give you hopefully some some good reasons to be able to look towards upgrading to what we have now and uh, also you know, get you excited about what we've got coming for the future at the same time. But to get started with this, I think it's important to understand why we did this. And that's why I got the first item on the agenda. And we're gonna take a look at what's going on in the market and why we decided to go the direction that we did with, with our, our product set. And then of course, I wanna show you some key use cases and capabilities around Citrix workspace. And we'll talk a little bit about the uh, secure digital perimeter. And of course, it's important to know the packaging. So you know, maybe you already have access to some of this. I saw some of you have, uh, are consuming Citrus Cloud Services, which means that you can actually use this now for what we're gonna show you today. And uh, it's important to know which services you can get individually, you know, what comes with what at the same time. So with that, why are we doing this idea of the Citrix workspace? Well, there's uh, been this incredible change. And we talk about the eras of technology where, you know, from we went from mainframe to PCs and then now PCs to what is the, the mobile world. And th this evolution has greatly expanded the diversity of the apps and the devices and the infrastructures and the working styles uh, to kind of force us to, to bend to this tremendous flexibility that's come along with all this choice that we've given you know, our, the end users. And so you now if we're running our infrastructures on on-premise, cloud, hybrid models, now we need a way to aggregate all of these resources into one because it's not just users going into an office, logging into a singular PC and having everything on one machine anymore. And so it's great because the possibilities are endless when we think about what we can do with everything that is out now. But uh, one of the problems with this is not necessarily all this new stuff doesn't replace the old. It's also just kind of added on top. Because it's estimated that we have 90% of our current on-premise applications are still going to be there in five years. So they're not necessarily going away. Now, one way that we can tackle this is to find a bunch of little niche products to, to help handle these situations. And uh, now this is a landscape of what we call just a, a regular average large company with uh, users that are forced, that they're delivering 100 individual applications and users have to navigate multiple environments. And within that becomes different performance outcomes from those environments. And they're overwhelmed by you know, apps, emails, notifications, tasks, and that ultimately takes up human RAM, which you know, increases context switching and reduces output. And they're unable to find the data that they're looking for. So this ultimately increases risk because users will find a way to get what they want if there's no way to stop them to do that. Then they'll, they'll find a way around that. And this, as you can see, it's just a, a complex graphic. So, and complexity, as we know, adds cost and slows us down. So that's why the industry has created all these individual categories of niche tools to address all of these different needs. But it's kind of an expensive thing, you know, answer uh, to, to the question of how we manage this. But it also boasts another question is how do we maintain and manage all of these independent technologies within our infrastructure? So like I mentioned, the complexity goes up, the user experience goes down, the cost ultimately goes up. All these point solutions can increase the cost per user by up to $800 per year. And with that goes the risk that goes up with that as well of losing IP because you have users doing their own thing and figuring out how to do it, go around IT's controls. So from the standpoint of Citrix, we wanted to come up with this idea of, of a holistic approach to a workspace strategy. And we wanted it to include specific elements. We wanted to be able to have the secure delivery of applications of all types, not necessarily just what we think of traditional Zen apps and desktop workloads, but also SaaS to mobile apps, and uh, also those that are virtualized in the data center. But it's important to include the content that goes along with that, and that it's delivered in an intelligent, integrated manner, whether that content resides in your own data center, on your own storage, or in the cloud somewhere. And we want to make it easy to manage this, the universal management across all the endpoints. When I say management, I, I mean management of the applications, management of the devices, management of the entire idea of the workspace. And a recent 
addition to our portfolio is this Citrix Analytics. And this is what's going to give us visibility and control uh, over the security and the performance of what's going on within the environments. And we have to have a flexible perimeter that's around this as well. I've got a slide a few, few slides down that shows why I think that that's important for us to have. And so when we look at what's required to make that workspace, uh, we've got the workspace technology stack. And so what, what we're showing here is all the required components to deliver a complete workspace. And to, if you take a second, imagine if any of these layers were missing, for example, if you pull out a workspace or without the content collaboration layer, uh, it would the user experience would go down a little bit because they wouldn't have access to the data that's there. So the end user value is often derived from the integrations built between these layers in the stack. So if a vendor owns all the layers like Citrix, it becomes much easier. So Citrix endpoint management, formerly known as Zenmobile, content collaboration, which is formerly known as ShareFile, they're both industry leading products on their own, but we're able to offer you a much better experience because we can integrate these workflows between the two products. So you flip that, you take a look at the big picture here, and this is kind of what we call the secure digital perimeter. You include all these pieces of, of the, the Citrix workspace together, all the way from the end users back into the content control, unified endpoint management, the applications themselves, uh, whether they be SaaS or on-premise. And speaking of the SaaS applications, there seems to be more and more of these every day. I think uh, so. Uh, these applications are how are they different now? You know, when you look at a SaaS app, such as or possibly is is Office a SaaS application? Is it a cloud app? Is it a mobile app? Is it a traditional application? Um, well, it, in my eyes, it's it's all of them, right? Because it can be delivered any which way. And so this means it's going to be more complex for you to be able to deliver this out to users. So what do we need? to be able to do this in a, in a meaningful way for the users to access it all from one point. So we have the new workspace app to get this, uh, all this proliferation of all these apps out to your users. And I think it's important to note, this is not just the new version of receiver. It, it is a replacement for Citrix receiver. It still does all the same wonderful things that receiver does. It's not losing any of that functionality, but we've added in some key pieces in here. So where we have an embedded browser built into it now. We've got micro VPN capabilities to get back into your, your infrastructure resources if you need it. We still have the HDX engine in there, which is important. Like I said, none of that's gonna change. We've added in important things for your users to be able to access things like their data with a content collaboration feed. And we've got analytics running through this as well. So that way we have you know secure visibility into what these users are doing and we can actually program the analytics service to act autonomously if there are any anomalies that are happening within the closed loop system that we can read and then we're adding in resource feeds as well you know if you're a subscriber to something like ServiceNow, now uh, we're going to have service now integrations in here so that way users can use the workspace interface to request uh, it tickets directly from there so that way they don't have to go to a separate place or there's also things like if uh, a user enters a workday workflow, don't say just to request time off. We're going to have a workday notification will be able to pop up directly in the workspace app for the in the manager send. So they know they have something that they need to take action on right there. Now, we, we wanted to rethink the workspace app or the receiver application due to, you know, the change in what's going on with how users interact with their apps. Now, I, I mentioned this briefly earlier, but this is just a, I like to call the depiction of the enterprise 1.0. You know, back in the day, which probably didn't seem that long ago, we all had computers at our desks at work. And if we had to remotely access it, we either used a VPN connection, which opened up the full network to give us access to our, you know, PC in the office, uh, the data that we had access to and the applications that were there. If we weren't using a full VPN, we were using, you know, Citrix uh, over an ICA connection to get through to that. But with the proliferation of all these SaaS apps, now it looks like this. Was not everything is where you want it to be. And we had a big question about how do you put a firewall around the internet? And while you can't really physically put a firewall around the internet, we can put all these SaaS apps in one place in the Workspace app. And we've got a feature of this called the app access control, 
which allows more than just proxy to those applications, but allows you to have single sign-on to any of those SaaS apps as well. And then we can apply web filtering uh, capabilities to this. So with that, the Citrix access control is that one solution to achieve secure access to all these applications here. Now, if, if you're a cloud user already, you might be familiar with what this screen looks like. And within the, uh, it's kind of a, like a storefront service in the cloud is like I call it, how I have to call it. So the Workspace app, you can actually, you choose a template. We've got 50 or so plus templates out there for SaaS applications. Once you configure the, the template, you add the application details. And now we have a drop down on this hand security piece. So if you have an app like Salesforce, which I'll, I'll show you in just a minute, you can apply things like restricted clipboard access, restricted printing. Uh, you can take away the navigation bar within the embedded browser. You can restrict downloads from that site. You can go as far to display watermarks across the screen so that way no one can actually physically take a picture and take that information away from the screen. And then in the convention, you can configure single sign-on access to that as well. So it adds those access control policies we're used to being able to put on internal applications and be able to add them to SAS app control. And right now we're the only vendor that's doing this as well. So in this scenario, what actually happens when you open something in the standard browser? So if I'm gonna click on you know, a, a SAS app, if enhanced security is turned off, it's just gonna open it in the standard browser that's on the local machine. It's just gonna send it right out to the internet. Now, if you've got enhanced security turned on for an application, uh, say this is using Workday as an example, it'll open it up in that embedded browser and you can see all the very annoying watermarks that are in here. The ones that we have in production are actually not quite as annoying to look at as that. And then if it's a whitelisted application, we can say, yes, we'll allow that to go out to the internet or we can just straight deny it. So the other option is we can send that to a secure browser service that'll be built into this. So that way it's a containerized published application from coming from the cloud and it has no way to harm any of the internal networks at all because it is just simply destroyed once the user disconnects from that. And because you have the enhanced security controls turned on, it, you know, if they tried to download something from a, from a site that they shouldn't have, they can't do that whatsoever. Like I said, you can turn that navigation pane off so they actually can't go to another website out of this as well. John, uh, quick, quick question for you that came up, and it's a great question. Uh, so Todd asked, you know, is the receiver going away or gone? And, and I'll let you answer, and I can add some color if you want, but I, I, I'm guessing the answer is no. Yeah, the receiver is not going away. And we're actually going to, you know, if you're on long-term service release versions, the, that, that version is going to stay there as well. Um, that this, like I said, if, uh, and I'll show you during my demo here, if you're running a traditional on-prem storefront and not going to use this workspace cloud service, and then it actually is skinned to look exactly like it used to. So it's fully backwards compatible with environments that you already have. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So I wanted to do just a quick demo. So this is actually the, the new workspace app here. And as you can see, it does look kind of familiar. It looks somewhat like receiver, but instead of just apps and desktops in a navigation pane over here, uh, we have files as well. But uh, you know, if you're looking at home, you can add your favorites to your applications. You can add your favorites to your desktops. And uh, then I've got my files feed, which has been a little bit finicky this morning, but forgive me, this is a demo environment. I uh, will show up here in all the recent files that you've opened from within there. So, and I wanted to show you the difference between this embedded browser as well. So I've got Workday here, and Workday is actually going to open up in the local browser I have. So I use, I'm a Chrome user, and this is my local desktop I've got going on. So it's going to open Workday in my local browser here, and it's gonna apply a single sign on to this and just allow me to go right into it since it has access to go into the internet. It doesn't have enhanced security policies turned on, but it does have single sign-on configured. So now I can go in and I can look at my expenses, uh, company directory, you know, take time off, uh, all the things I need to do within the system here. Now, if I wanted to open Salesforce, Salesforce is where we have a lot more sensitive information containing customer lists and things of that nature. So this is gonna need to open up within that secure browser session we talked about. So 
this window is this embedded browser it's based on Chromium that launches from the workspace app right here. And once again, single sign-on gets me directly into it, but notice there's no navigation bar up here. So I can't get to anything outside of Salesforce. It's only this within, within here. And it says sandbox, and then this gives you the idea that this is, this is where the resource is coming from and it's being delivered through that sandbox application with, from within the Workspace app. And as you can see, the watermark is here. So if I wanted to try and you know take a, a screenshot of that, it's going to be it's going to be watermarked. I'm not going to be able to get away with doing that. Now we still have all the desktops right here as well, and like I can mention the files piece. And for those of you that are, I think I think there was just a few more that were using OneDrive more than they were ShareFile, but if they're still using Dropbox or if if you're still using you know Box.com or something like that or you know, network shares or even SharePoint sites, you need a way to enum enumerate all that data for the users to get to. Uh, I don't have the connectors configured here because my environment was reset this morning, but you can actually add all those connectors in the file. So on top of the network shares, which I can see, then you will also see OneDrive here. You can see box.com here. Uh, you can see SharePoint here. And on top of the personal folders that come along with the Citrix files and collaboration piece. And so all of those will show up within the user's feed down here at the bottom at the same time. So it really does give them access to all the desktops, apps, and files all within one screen here. And like I said, if you do need to use traditional on-prem storefront, no, I've actually got this linked to two stores. So this is my production Citrix environment. This is the exact same application that we have here. And it actually needs me to log in, but it'll, it'll show, it'll look just like what you would think uh, the storefront looks like today. So while this is uh, spinning up, uh, a good question came in from Steve. Um, you know, does this does all this store the roaming profile? So um, yeah, I, yeah, I'll let you answer. I can give some color based on my uh, experience as well. Yeah, so just like you're used to having these the profiles roam back and forth from session to session, it'll be able to do the exact same thing the receiver does. So I'll, if I have, you know, this is my production environment, I open up my desktop here, it's going to pull that roaming profile up on whatever device I am, wherever I'm at, and apply all those settings. And then if I move that session to another device, even if I'm still logged in here, it'll just pull everything that I have open to that other device. Um, yeah, and I, you know, the, so Steve, the, that's a good question. I mean, profiles are interesting because, you know, think about, you know, how big a profile can get. Um, you know, and then there's also things within the profile. So the most common example would be, you know, your Outlook, your Outlook OST, right? And if you have, you know, if you're using hosted, you know, Exchange uh, with Office 365, uh, you know, we all know the OST file can be a pain, uh, especially in a shared environment. Um, so, you know, ShareFile hasn't, you know, gotten to the point where it's dealing with the profile yet, uh, nor has, you know, OneDrive. You know, however, if you start looking into technologies like app layering or, you know, a very nice complementary product called FS Logics, you know, that's going to help you with, um, you know, the profile. And, you know, really the profile management is still going to be done, you know, at the OS layer. So really, you know, the, um, you know, the workspace app is more focused on, you know, the delivery of the applications and consolidation in one view for the user to keep it simple. Um, so, but behind the scenes, you would still manage you know, your profiles as you, as you were. Uh, however, if you are doing, you know, traditional folder redirection and roaming profiles, uh, you know, there's better ways. So if you're interested, you know, definitely reach out and you know, I can share some color on that as well. So great, great question. Um, so, uh, hey Todd, I just want to let you know, we'll, we'll cover packaging. And if we don't cover your question, uh, you know, we'll try to make sure we cover that. Uh, Owen oh, asked a good question. Hey, do you have any uh, workspace example uh, cases for public safety? So using it instead of a dedicated uh, public safety environment. So, you know, Owen, oh, I'm guessing you have like a dedicated network that's kind of fenced off. Is that kind of where you're going? And, you know, I think, yeah, you know, secure browsers are interesting because, yeah, you can whitelist and blacklist specific uh, URLs and then you know, when they close the secure browser session, that's it. And, 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 you know, Jonathan, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can choose to keep the data or not, correct? Yes, that's secure correct. Browser? Okay. No, if it goes into a secure browser session, then it won't. It just gets 
destroyed. But you now, if you can have enhanced security without sending it to a secure browser session, in that case, it will keep the data. Okay. Uh, and then Justin asked a good question: uh, embedded secure browser for on-prem non-citrus cloud SaaS applications. That in that case, we see just you know, you're just going to be publishing a standard uh, browser to do that in most cases, because it, okay. it is a cloud service only for that secure browser service. Um, cool. And then uh, there's a lot of good questions. I'll answer one more, and I'll let Jonathan continue on. But uh, you know, Kevin asked, uh, "What's a secure? What is secure browser under the hood? Is it IE, Chrome, Firefox, uh, or or other?" Um, and I'm going to guess that's. Uh, the answer to that is it's secret sauce IP from Citrix, but maybe you have a better answer. <laughs> That's a great question. So, yep. <laughs> uh, and I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll answer your question in a minute, but uh, yeah, continue on, Jonathan. Sorry. It's a lot of good no. questions. Thanks, everybody. Keep them coming. Yeah, you know, I'm actually glad that you brought up the um, you know, kind of the profile management question. I was thinking more in terms of, you know, yes, you just manage the profiles like you normally would, but that, that OST, file following the users around, especially when we're talking about Exchange Online, has been a problem when it comes to latency is pulling mail down to all clients. And so one of the, the things that we've done, you mentioned with app layering, is we're actually able to use a, a specific app layer for that OST to follow the users around. So that kind of helps um, fix that issue there. I think Microsoft is working on something to make that better, but MS Logics has got a good product with their profile virtualization strategy too. So yeah, just for, for out of box integration with all those SaaS vendors, the wrap end of this, we've got a ton of them right now. Um, I think we have more than 50 plus templates that are within the cloud portal that you can configure and we're adding more and more of them all, all the time. So out of the box, we're ready to go with quite a few vendors that are there. So, and the endpoint management, I think is a, is a key piece of this as well, but really why choose that Citrix access control? Well. And the security piece is, is pretty key. So, and like I said, the endpoint management offers two levels of encryption for data stored on the device without requiring a device enrollment. We can talk about managing the devices themselves. And a lot of EMM vendors, including AirWatch, only leverage the encryption provided by the device itself. So we use a secure micro VPN capabilities. We provide a single secure per app tunnel, which will reduce the likelihood of the malicious app gaining access to any resources behind the firewall. And then you know, we want to be as flexible as possible with this. So it's part of the, the Citrix workspace that endpoint management helps provide users access to more than just their mobile apps and you know, you can get their Windows desktops and virtual apps as well. I still use my iPad to work off of from time to time with my, uh, my virtual desktop. So, and then of course the single sign-on I think is a big part of that. You know, we, we want to be able to have it as easy for users to get into, you know, their their resources they need without having to, as Pete mentioned earlier, write down any passwords on sticky notes and keep them under the keyboard because they've got too many to remember to get into each one of these SaaS apps or applications they're reaching uh, internally. So as, as far as the content collaboration, I know it's, this is what we're calling now. We, we can still call it share file if you like. It doesn't bother me one bit. But uh, you know, it's a really good way for users to take their data with them wherever they are. So they stop saying, dude, where's my stuff? I gotta, gotta find my files. And it, it helps overcome more than just the users uh, accessing their, their data that they need. But you know, ultimately we created this collaboration piece to enhance workforce productivity. So with traditional systems and solutions, they have limited access and the siloed within geographies or even within the network. And so that impedes productivity because data needs to be accessible to the users, not on the system. And uh, we don't want them to be able to not access it on mobile devices or anything like that. So this really gives them access to, to all of their files, you know, whether it's even going to be in ShareFile or any of those connectors that we mentioned um, on any device they have. And then being able to flow the data, not just from within the system to the users, but from one application to another through email and through, you know, um, assembly, we need to be able to share and compile all those data points um, from multiple different resources there. And of course, we talked about the, the file and data that is in leg legacy infrastructure systems. You know, you still have old FTP servers and you need to be able to way to migrate that off and give it to the users in a meaningful way. Maybe we talk about just adding a storage zone controller and migrating that data there so that way they can have it through through ShareFile or through the, 
you know, content collaboration. But on top of that, you get an added layer of security. And if you're worried about protecting IP and you want to know where all these files are going, uh, you get access to, to run reports to see how you know where these files are going. And now that we have the analytics built on top of this as well, if a file, if the user has some strange behaviors, say they log in from a country that they shouldn't be in at a certain time of day and start downloading a bunch of files that maybe they shouldn't, we can flag that user automatically and put them on a risk list and notify the admin that something as strange is going on all on its own. And a good thing to note here too is that the Citrix workspace, while it, it does look and act like receiver, but it grows with you. So if this is something that you just want to, to use for files for right now, or maybe just a few SaaS apps, you don't want to tie your Zen app or Zen desktop infrastructure, or you don't have that to tie into that, you don't have to. So if you have the workspace um, premium edition that comes with the files and the secure, secure browser, you can still utilize the, the workspace app and give those, those resources out to the users. And so if you will choose to add on more of those resources as time goes on, then you can you know, enumerate the desktops and the traditional published applications into this as well. And I forgot to mention earlier too, that this can be customized to look however you'd like it to be. Change the colors. Instead of having Citrix here with the workspace, you can put your own logos there. Um, I like to joke that you can actually make it say, you can not put Citrix on there at all so the users don't blame Citrix when it get, when it's broken for some reason. But it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a, I like that we did that. It's a much cleaner interface. And I know the, the customizations are, are, were a big ask and we delivered on that. Yeah, it's great. It, and it's a very flat interface too, which is nice. Uh, you know, so it's not, um, you know, it's, there's, I mean, let's face it, we don't need things to be jazzy. Um, and it's, so I like that it's nice and flat too. But um, so the, another question that came up and it kind of plays into the context of SAS uh, from Andrew, um, you know, he said, how is SSO configured to pass through credentials uh, using kind of the examples you've been giving? Um, you know, I, I think to spin off of this, I think what he's asking is what's required to uh, take advantage of the SAS uh, functionality. I'm guessing uh, SAML, uh, you know, 1.0 and 2.0. Do you, do you guys support OpenAuth, I'm guessing, too? Yeah, all this is actually based on SAML. For okay. And it's the, the, it's the SAS applications that we have configured on here have to be SAML configurable on their end. So that way, you know, something like Salesforce, you can configure SAML. So that way, the, the AD credentials, which is what we use for authentication, um, will pass through then on from the Workspace app itself into SAML via the, the SAS app. And that's how you, we provide the single sign on there. Cool. And um, another question came up, and I think this is going to be more future, and I'll, I'll give my context after you as well. Uh, is, you know, I have Citrix uh, when I go to the URL, the workspace site, I'm prompted for uh, a UPN and password. Uh, is there a way for this to be like the on-prem storefront and do domain pass through, you know, SSO, you know, pin and token. So two-factor authentication. And yeah, you know, I don't know if you have any context on kind of when are those functionalities coming to the cloud. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't obviously say anything because I'm a partner, but you know, I don't know if you have any context. Yeah, MFA for cloud is coming soon, I promise. They've, that was a big ask and we uh, are going to have that very, very soon. So that was uh, something with the NetScaler gateway service um, was yep. kind of lacking, is still lacking that functionality, but that they're, they're rapidly working on getting that out. So I, by the end of the year, I'd like yeah. to say. So Wendell, uh, just, I'll give you my kind of partner context as well. Um, you know, I think I think it's going to be a very interesting time for uh, workspace, workspace app, uh, and the gateway functionalities for Citrus Cloud. And, let, and let's remember, Citrus Cloud is a platform, okay? Um, and if you're, you know, for those who have been on the journey, uh, I've been dealing with Citrus Cloud for almost three years now. Um, you know, the last year has been really fun because there's been a lot, a lot of cool functionality, you know, layered into the cloud. You know, Citrix did a lot of cool announcements, and they delivered on all those announcements uh, when they when they came out with them at Synergy. Um, so, you know, I have good faith that you know, if I were a betting man and I was going to go to Las Vegas today, you know, I think you're going to see some of those functionalities between now and you know, you know, by you know, between now and end of year, if not, you know, more, you know, more stuff between now and next Synergy. And I think you're going to see a lot of traction. So it's going to be fun. And again, you know, uh, you you know. 
you'll, you'll see a lot of functions get lay, layered in. So, um, and Todd, uh, you know, let, I, I love your questions. Um, we're going to, we're going to talk about, uh, packaging in a minute. So let, let, let's get to that slide and then we can, I'll bring up your question. So I'm not ignoring you. Uh, don't worry. He's, he's been asking some packaging questions. So I want to get, let, let you get to that before we jump into that. So. Gotcha. So back to you, Jonathan. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate the questions for sure. So th the value with this for the content collaboration solution is that it really ties together uh, the access security, the data level from ShareFile, but also bringing in the tight integrations with the other applications we have in there by being able to have your data rest there and have the file type associations already there and open the appropriate applications within the, the Citrix environment if needed. And the ability to sync the content on local and remote storage in, in a secure manner. Um, this includes not only traditional devices, but on mobile as well. So you can, it syncs within your, your mail clients, such as Outlook on your laptop and your secure mail on your mobile devices. And then we have workflows built into this as well. So it, it's, it's more than just keeping data there. It's actually had a pretty powerful workflow tools in here, um, which helps protect content from being shared when it shouldn't and also you know, retrieving that uh, content when it shouldn't be retrieved. Oh, I forgot about the animations on this one. But yeah. Now I'm providing single sign-on with MFA you know, with Gateway. It's a gateway service, but coming soon. Um, and if you are using traditional on-prem net scalers, you can definitely configure multi-factor authentication. Uh, that is very easy to do now. It is a very common way to do that. Yeah, and, and the cool thing, and I, I, I was going to raise that when the question came up, you know, the cool thing about having on-prem NetScaler um, combined with the cloud, you, you can still do some cool two-factor auth, you know, workflows, um, and it does give you a little more flexibility. So, you know, if you are a NetScaler customer, you know, if you're touching your NetScaler every day, you're doing something wrong, um, it's pretty headless and, and, you know, hopefully it's low touch for you. So, so you know, you know, as you grow with the cloud, you can eventually get to a point where you won't hopefully need that scalar on-prem, but you'll probably still use it for load balancing and things like that. But for now, yeah, you could leverage your net scaler as a two factor, kind of the front end for your cloud and getting to the workspace. So. Yeah, great. Cool. I wanted to bounce over to the analytics piece here. So one of the things that we've done, I think is really cool is to be able to provide more visibility into what's happening from end to end on the uh, the Citrix infrastructures we have here. So we've got security analytics now, and we, we did this because there's a, just a huge demand for visibility and analytics uh, into to look into environments to help reduce the impact of attacks that are happening all the time, and to be able to react more quickly to those attacks. And of course, we want to be able to detect previously unknown threats because we can only predict so much about what's going to happen. And so now built into you know, our cloud services, we have this analytics uh, dashboard. And right now we've got security rolled out and eventually we're gonna be rolling out performance and the usage is part of this as well. Um, but right now security is where we wanted to start. But essentially we take your users and we assign them a risk score. And this is based off of the behaviors that they display within the Citrix environment. So what applications are opening, where they're opening them from, what data they're accessing through content collaboration, you know, if they're failing EPA scans on their mobile devices, uh, things of that nature. And as you see, like Georgina here has been a very bad user. And because of the things that she's done, um, we can drill down in here and actually look at what events cause her to have that score change go so high and have it uh, automatically start session recording and notify the admin so that way they can take action on that if needed. And there's a bunch of different parameters that we can set to take actions on here. And they're all tied to, you know, the different product stacks that we flow the analytics through, whether it be access files, endpoint devices, uh, what's going on in the SaaS apps, or, you know, take it down to the virtual apps and desktops layer. And it takes about a week once you turn these data sources on to start to build a profile for a user and get, uh, get that information in there. I mentioned you can drill down on these risk indicators, uh, so that way the risky behavior and like we can initiate session recording if needed. And then it's very easy to create rules and conditions within the portal. And then when that condition is met, the automatic actions come across the Citrix portfolio and can uh, take action on that there. So 
you know, it's it's secure, flexible, and it gives a great user experience. And for the end use, for the admins, if you like to look at your director information, we're going to be pulling that in as well. So we're going to get a ton of information that's in there. Um, and I said, I, this is a a very advanced system that's utilizing machine learning and AI for proactive security management. But it's also smart enough to know that we don't need to necessarily just completely lock out a user because they had one type of an anomalous behavior that went that went and happened. Yeah, and this is and this is one of my favorite, uh, um, you know, I would say net new features in, in the Citrus portfolio. And you know, for those who also own Netscaler, you know, if you're an enterprise and or platinum customer, even advanced customer, you you own this cool thing called Netscaler Moss. So Netscaler uh, Management and Analytics, or excuse me, Citrix uh, Management and Analytics uh, and uh, Citrix App Delivery Controller, AKA Netscaler. So, um, and if you're not using Moss, you should be using Moss because then you'll be able to plug in other data into the analytics engine with like things like HDX, Insight, uh, login, you know, attempts, uh, latency issues. Cause I mean, let's face it, how many of us get that, that phone call uh, and excuse the term, but Hey, Citrix sucks, you know, and, and, or Hey, Citrix is slow. And like, like Jonathan said earlier, sometimes it's easier just to remove the logo because their first instinct is to blame Citrix. Now you have the data to be able to say, Nope, you put your password in wrong or Nope, the latency was off or Nope. You know, Hey, we noticed, uh, you know, your internet connection was super slow. Where were you connected from? You know, so th things like that. So I think, I think, uh, you know, that this is going to be one of the cool products and, and there's been a lot of questions around bundling and we'll, and we'll get, and we'll get in, into the bundling. So, uh, and Citrus is going to give you guys the opportunity to take advantage of some of these features, even though you're a little bit on prem still. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm pretty excited to see what they're going to do with the performance side of this, because we have all the options to be able to control policies to enhance the user experience. And now we're going to be able to act on those autonomously when, you know, latency goes high, do, do policy shift and they make the user experience better for the user on the fly. I'm just kind of spitballing there, but I'm, I'm hoping to see that sort of stuff once we launch the performance analytics. So, but I wanted to be able to touch quickly on the deployment options because all this stuff is really cool. And, uh, but we need to know how, how you get it, right? Like how you actually take advantage of, of all these new features. And before we get into the packaging of that, which is also relevant, you know, the deployment matters too. And so just very high level, this is what the Citrix infrastructure would look like on a traditional scale. And to be able to use something like the Workspace app, we need to be able to flow it through our cloud service somehow. So if you subscribe to any one cloud service, like I mentioned, you can use that Workspace app interface. Uh, you just configure it through the cloud there. And so if you subscribe to the full virtual apps and desktop service, um, this is actually what it looks like. We pull the control plane completely out and you let us manage that for you. And that includes the SQL as part of that as well. So you don't have to worry about updating the delivery controllers, uh, storefront, studio, director, the license server, that's all handled by Citrix and our own cloud tenant that is gonna be siloed off just for you. The only additional piece that goes into this to connect to your BDAs would be the cloud connector. And it's just a it's a simple system that allows the data to flow up and then to the delivery controllers in the cloud. So that way we're not delivering desktops and we're not delivering the apps. Uh, those are still maintained within your data center. But we're just taking control of the uh, the Citrix delivery mechanisms. And the good thing about this too is it gives you that flexibility of choice. So we have the cloud management plan that we pull out. And then all those services there, you know, wherever you want to put one of those cloud connectors, depending on if you have a data center, extend this out to say Azure AWS um, or in a private cloud somewhere, you can enumerate those and manage those all through a singular cloud plane there. So it, it really does add some value if you're looking to possibly move some workloads out to the cloud. So the new workspace offerings. So I'm, we promised we were going to get to those packaging questions, and here they are. So for the workspace, we wanted to make that workspace app, the analytics, and the secure browser service accessible uh, just in case you didn't have any interest in any of the other products we had. So we kind of we package that in its own little bundle right now, which is we're calling it the workspace standard. So this gives you the access control. You can enumerate the SaaS applications into your into your workspace app. And then you can also you know, get analytics over what's flowing through that. 
And the neat thing is we have a, a feature of this that's actually called the site aggregation feature. So if you have a traditional on-prem Zenep or Zen desktop environment, you can aggregate that into this as well without having to go to the virtual apps and desktop servers. Now, if you're looking for extend that out and you need endpoint management and content collaboration or share file, we have all that as a bundle together as well. So that's the workspace premium now. And if you want to tie all this together to get the full suite of everything with virtual apps and desktops, that's the Workspace Premium Plus. Yeah, and so the cool thing about this is, is Citrix has really made it a lot easier to get take advantage of some of the features that you're interested in that, you know, so you don't necessarily have to go all in with the cloud. And, and that's what I love about the this packaging now is it gives you the ability to take advantage of you know some of the features you really really want but you're not you know what you're not ready to do you know apps and desktops in the cloud or you're still doing an on-prem you know zen mobile deployment um so that, that that's what this does is it gives you guys the flexibility to choose what you need and then kind of grow you know with the product as you see fit yeah and i just wanted to show this matrix up here to give you a good idea of what all the features that comes with what versions of this and i've I, I swear I've deleted those old dates out there. We're past August 6th at this point. So everything is available now that you see here. <laughs> Unless we can go back in time. But <laughs> cool. Hey, uh, so quick question that came up and I uh, just want to make sure it kind of gets answered because it's a, it's a pretty important question. Um, is ShareFile FedRAMP certified? I personally don't know the, the answer to that. So I was going to throw it out to you, Jonathan, and see if you knew. And uh, good question, Nick. We are in FedRAMP process, so for for all of this actually, um, it's not there yet because it's a very lengthy verification uh, validation process that that all this uh, has to go through with testing. But it is it's on its way. Cool. All right. All right. So am I taking back controls? Uh, Jonathan, are you? you yeah, let me, uh, that, that is all I had. So I'm going to pass this back over to you. All right, great. Uh, all right. So um, we're at the tail end. So again, if you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. If we didn't hit, if we didn't hit your question, just nudge me and say, hey, you didn't answer my question. Um, really quick, I just want to give you guys a highlight of who is Integra. So, you know, if you are quite, if you are a customer, feel free to hit the hand raise button to let me know you're on the call. And if, if you are a customer, thank you. Um, but you know, I'm gonna keep it simple here. I'm not gonna to get too deep on who we are. Uh, just our quick infomercial. So, you know, our founder, Andy Whiteside, uh, you know, he and I and Keith, uh, our VP of sales, we all worked at Citrix at one point. Uh, I personally was at Citrix for about 10 years. Uh, my, you know, my background is product management, sales engineering. Uh, Andy was a sales engineer. And, you know, he really wanted to form a partner that's different. And that, and that really was his goal when he formed uh, Zentegra. So we do a lot of stuff around enablement, uh, education, and trying to get you guys to tr truly understand the products that you own. And so Andy really wanted to be different in the way that he partners uh, with companies like Citrix, uh, you know, the Nutanix, Igel, Avanti. So those are just some of the cost co companies we partner with. Um, so you know, who, what is Integra? Simple, we're a reseller, so we can sell you Citrix. Uh, we're a consultant, so we can help you implement Citrix, and we're actually a certified a uh, bench consultant for Citrix now. So we have three guys that are certified to uh, work for CSS. Um, so, you know, a pretty good, uh, uh, you know, certification process and a lot of tests. So kudos to the, the three uh, consultants who did that. And then finally, we can act as an advisor. So if you have questions on, you know, should I go to the cloud, uh, things like that, you know, you can always ask me and you'll learn and Jonathan will learn that I'm a pretty honest guy and I'm going to tell you what I, what I think. But really the goal here is, hey, you can come to one vendor, have it all on one invoice and have one point of contact for the various uh, technologies that we uh, resell. So you can see here, we do resell a lot of different vendors, but you can see a common theme here. Uh, we really only focus in the end user compute space. Uh, so, and you can see the uh, you know, the one who is the center of our universe, Citrix. That's what we do. Uh, that's what we're good at. And, you know, that's where we excel. So, you know, obviously our, our top five are going to be Microsoft, Avanti, Nutanix, Agile, and Google. But again, the goal here is to enhance and 
uh, help your citrus environment. So if you have any questions on any of these vendors, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, you know, I can oddly answer a lot of questions around a lot of those vendors because I've touched them in one way or another in the last five to 10 years. Uh, also, if you're interested, we do do a lot of free events um, online, in person. So uh, if you're interested, you know, head over to zentegra.com forward slash events, and you can see some of the upcoming webinars we have. So this is part of my series that I call Webinar Wednesdays. Uh, and then also I do a lot of online workshops as well as on-premise uh, workshops as well. So I may be coming to a city near you. Uh, so definitely go to this site, bookmark it, and sign up. They're all free. So again, we can offer a wide array of services. Um, and one of my free you know, things I like is our free micro assessments, AKA health checks, right? So we can come in and do a health assessment on, Zente uh, on your uh, citrus environment, your net scalar implementation, uh, your networking, if you're a Cisco shop, uh, and we do some stuff around Avanti, IGIL, and we also do an Office 365 assessment as well. So if you're interested in any of these services, you know, definitely let us know, but we're a full shop. Um, we're also an MSP. So watch for a cool announcement coming out next week around Microsoft uh, and our MSP practice. Uh, so why is Integra? I'm gonna keep it simple here. Uh, you know, we're focused, we're capable, and we're committed. So, you know, really the goal here is the clients are the center of our universe. So if you have a renewal coming up, uh, and I, you know, again, if you have a renewal coming up, you definitely wanna look at, at potentially renewing with Zentegra. And the reason why is we're gonna take that money, we're gonna give you a rebate, and you can use that money to go to Citrix. And in some instances, you can pay your whole way to uh, Citrix Synergy. Um, so if you don't know what Citrix Synergy is, that's Citrix's user conference. It's in Atlanta next year. Uh, Zentegra personally brought uh, 85 people to Synergy last year, and we had about 100, uh, 210 customers there uh, at a dinner that we hosted. So again, we really care about our customers, and we really give back to the community as far as trying to get you to user events, doing a lot of education, uh, et cetera. So you know, that's really in a nutshell you know, why Zentegra. So again, some calls to action. If, if you need, oh, uh, that's a little off slide there. So, but anyway, calls to actions. Uh, if, you, um, if, you, if you need a demo workspace app, let us know, we can dig deeper. Uh, if you have any questions around some of the use cases you saw today, uh, definitely uh, dig deeper. Uh, and we can we can definitely get on a call and dig deeper because obviously it's you know it's a canned demo so we can answer some of the deeper questions you had. Um, and if you if you have a renewal coming up, definitely let us know. We can we can talk through your renewal and see how it could potentially fit into uh, getting workspace app uh, layered in because obviously we can help you run the numbers, run the ROIs, think about the different costs associated with upgrading, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we can have, you know we can kind of give you some food for thought around costs. So I'm looking down the list again. Uh, if there's any questions, don't hesitate to ask. We got a couple more minutes. Uh, let's see. We got a question from Wendell with Workspace Premium Plus. Does it come with storage, or is that uh, a separate purchase? So Jonathan, I'm guessing uh, if they go Workspace Premium Plus, that includes share file. And I guess Wendell, I think are you asking about uh, hosted storage? So in the cloud, or are you talking about on-prem storage? So I think we'll answer both just to be safe. So any insight into that, Jonathan? Yeah, so we actually do, we have storage packs that you can buy separately. Um, when you get the the share file or the, the Citrix collaboration that comes with the Premium Plus, it is assuming it is zero gig. So that way, you know, you can stand up your own storage on controllers or connect that to, you know, any of the, the resources we talked about. But if you want to buy storage from us, you can. You don't necessarily have to. Cool, all right. And what's the default storage when you go to Premium Plus? Uh, that's just the the assume, assuming you're gonna have a storage on controller, so okay, all right. we, it's the zero cool. gig option is what we call it there. Okay, cool. So you, if you wanted to use cloud storage, you then would buy a storage pack. That's correct. Yep. Okay, cool. Hopefully that answered your question, Wendell. Uh, hey, great, great question, Mike. I'll I'll, I'll take a shot in answering this because I do a lot of cloud workshops. If you move to Citrus Cloud, uh, do they upgrade to do they upgrade the new versions? Blah, blah, you know, the, the storefront, AKA workspace now, uh, the delivery controllers, et cetera. So the great thing about the Citrus Cloud again, Mike, is uh, it's a, um, again, it's a platform, right? So uh, a customer put it best in one of my workshops. It's the stuff you don't want to deal with anymore. So Citrix, yes, they own the Citrus Cloud. They upgrade all the components. The only thing you got to worry about is can your receivers connect? Check, 
and, and then your VDA is on-prem. And again, if you're interested in kind of digging deeper uh, into the Citrus Cloud, uh, Zentegra does offer a free, you know, one day uh, cloud hands-on workshop with full labs and everything. And you can partake in that. And I guarantee you to walk out of there and fully understand uh, the power of Citrus Cloud uh, with Workspace. Um, so then Fred asked a great question. Uh, good, for, Nice to see you, Fred, by the way. Uh, uh, does it require cloud and, or does it work with an on-premise only environment? So good question. It actually came a lot, up a lot today. And keep me honest here, Jonathan, because, you know, I got to, you know, you got to cut me loose at, at some point, right? Um, <laughs> uh, the, the answer is, yeah, you don't need, uh, you don't need the full stack. So the great thing about the uh, stack, the different offerings is if you go with standards, Fred, you're able to take advantage of, you know, like the analytics, uh, the secure browser and the workspace app functionality. Uh, but you can even do like a hybrid approach as well. You could do, you know, workspace app for a subset of users and keep your traditional storefront set up for another subset of users. So you can get fairly creative, Fred. And, you know, again, if you, if you have any deeper questions, feel free, we can whiteboard together and kind of talk through that. But good question. But I think the real summary here is, no, you don't need to fully shift your on-prem environment to the cloud to take advantage of some of the cool features you saw today. So analytics, secure browser, or you go to the middle tier, you can get some share file uh, and some endpoint management. And by the way, if you're not looking at Zen Mobile, you're missing out. So definitely, you know, take a look at Zen Mobile. Um, I personally love it. It's it, it's a great feature, especially if you have a lot of BYO. And if you have any questions around that, definitely ping me. Um, so the Workspace client, uh, I think also oh, Fred said I meant Workspace client or Workspace app. Um, you know, I think, so there is some confusion, Jonathan. So yeah. again, let's see if I can do that. Tag team here, but Workspace app, to get the full advantage of it, you, you, need, you do need to use the uh, hosted workspace, correct? Yeah, so the way that it works is um, you're able to enumerate whatever you have subscribed to as far as the services into the Workspace app. But you have to have at least one service to be able to get access to that. Okay. So if you have, you know, just the, the workspace standard, then you're just going to get your SaaS apps tied to that, and you're going to get analytics and delivery to the workspace app through that. Now, if you have just virtual apps and desktops, then you can enumerate those into that. The, but you can grow through in that stack as you can. And because it works as a storefront service through the cloud, you have to have at least one of those cloud services to get access to the workspace app. Otherwise, it's going to look and act just like your traditional receiver would with a, through a regular storefront. Cool. Um, so Jason asked a great question. Um, you know, with the new Citrix desktops, can you set up exclusive access to customized desktops, or does the user profiles on the desktop server still have have to look like look at a remote user profile store? So, Jason, that's an interesting question, and um, you know, the good news is, uh, and again, I, I definitely encourage you head over to our site, zentegracom forward slash events. I, I do an, I do a great workshop around cloud, uh, and you'll get full hands on, and you'll kind of walk out of there understanding what is uh, Citrix Cloud, right? Um, but to answer your question, the cool thing is your apps and da or your data and your OSs are in your control. So, you know, when you leverage Citrus Cloud, uh, you can do, you, you leverage what's called a cloud connector. The cloud connector connects your data center uh, to the, the Citrus Cloud. Now, the cool thing about the cloud connector is it's evergreen. So you're not going to touch it. Once you get it up and running, it becomes kind of like an extension of the cloud to your premise. Uh, and then from there, you're still going to manage the VDAs like you always did. You're still gonna manage your profiles uh, like you always did. So from that aspect, not a lot's gonna change. Now, can you get creative? Yeah, you could get creative and you know we could talk about that offline, but, but again, nothing's gonna change. And the great thing about that story is if you look from a security perspective, the only thing really being stored up in the cloud is the platform, all right? And so there's no user data, there's no user credentials, et cetera. Um, so, so, you know, really from a Zen app or excuse me, virtual apps and desktop point of view, um, you know, you're still, you still have pretty good control about around catalogs, uh, you know, delivery groups. And now in the cloud, they're called libraries. So uh, definitely, you know, check out our site, feel free to sign up again. It's free. Uh, you can take one day. There's one actually coming up in about two weeks. So feel free to sign up. So uh, uh, is there a webinar coming up that will cover Zen mobile and workspace cloud? Uh, so Wendell, great, great question. And, you know, I guess the answer is from a Zentegra point of view, yes. Uh, so we do a lot of hands-on workshops with uh, cloud and we also do a hands-on workshop. I'm actually in the process of rejigging it to be more 
focused on Zen Mobile in the cloud, not Zen Mobile on-prem. We, we do have an on-prem version, but we keep getting asked about the cloud version. So, so definitely head over to Zentegra.com forward slash events. Definitely get on one of the cloud ones. Uh, and I can guarantee you'll walk out of there with some good food for thought. Um, and then uh, WEM. Oh, wow, the first question around WEM. So Brandon asks, is uh, WEM part of the platform as well? Uh, I'm guessing in Premium Plus it is, right, Jonathan? Yes, that's correct. So it's actually Workspace Premium and Premium Plus you get access to WEM. All right, cool. And if you do uh, just virtual apps and desktop standalone too, you get it as well, right? That's, yes, you do. yes, you do. Okay, cool. So hopefully that answers your question, Brandon. If you have any questions around WEM or, yeah, you know, I actually ran product management for uh, Res1 Workspace, which is now Avanti and know a lot about AppSense and a lot about FS Logic. So if you have any questions around any of those technologies, definitely let, let me know. All right. So uh, I think we're coming to the end of it. A lot of great questions. I want to thank uh, my Citrix friends for uh, taking part in this today. I really appreciate it, Jonathan, for taking time today. Um, and I think this was fun. And again, we have a, a lot of these coming up. Uh, the next one on the docket is ThinPrint. Uh, so we have one next Wednesday uh, covering what is ThinPrint and mobile printing. So if you're interested in that topic, head over and sign up. And uh, again, we'll have the same format and try to keep it as entertaining as possible. So with that, uh, thanks everybody for joining. Have a great rest of your days and uh, talk to you hopefully in future webinars.